The Mutual Broadcasting System presents Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. On King! On you, Husky! Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. Here's a mutual note for you. Every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock over Mutual, it's time for the Children's Hour with programs for all lovers of daring adventure and thrilling exploits. On Mondays, there's Bobby Benson, the famous cowboy kid who gallops to rangeland excitement with his B-Bob E riders. Wednesday and Friday, the fearless newspaper publisher, Britt Reed, dons the secret disguise of the Green Hornet and roars into action to bring evildoers to justice. And every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 5.30... Wild Bill Hickok, the real-life marshal of the early West, outwits rustlers and renegades in stories of blazing action. Tuesdays and Thursdays bring Sergeant Preston of the Yukon at 5 o'clock with the stirring adventures of a Northwest Mountie as he faces incredible hardship and danger to get his man. And Sky King follows at 5.30. Tune to Mutual every weekday afternoon at 5 o'clock for programs that take you to a world of imagination over most of these stations. Sam Savage had found a pocket of gold on Queen River. It petered out as spring approached, but Sam had $20,000 worth of the precious metal on his dog sled. He was on the way to Dawson, hoping to be in time to board the first boat of the season to return to the States. Monsieur Husky! Monsieur Husky! Sam was traveling south along Freeze Out Trail when he met a swarthy, shifty-eyed gambler named Keo. He mistrusted the gambler on sight and decided that if Keo asked any questions, he would tell him nothing about the bags of gold that were stowed with the gear on his sled. So you've been prospecting Queen River, eh, Sam? That's right, Keo. Now I suppose you're on your way to spend your gold, huh? Oh, I'm on my way to Dawson. And if I'd found gold, I reckon I'd be planning to spend it, but <laughs> I wasn't lucky. Ah, it's too bad. Why are you looking at me like that? I'm trying to remember where I've seen you before. Your name's familiar and so is your face. Oh, forget it. We've never met. Oh, I've seen you somewhere. I just can't... Yeah, now I remember. You're the Sam Savage who was convicted of killing a man 10, 11 years ago in Seattle. How'd you know that? I knew the man you shot. I followed your trial in the newspapers. You knew Pete Rapson? Yeah, we'd worked together in a couple of gambling halls. And Pete got into an argument with you and your shot. He drew on me first. But the jury didn't believe me. And for that, I did 10 years in prison in the state. Oh, no, don't lose your temper, Sam. Pete was no friend of mine. I bear no grudge against you. Come on, we'll hit the trail together. All right. Hush! 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 It was late afternoon when the two sleds halted at a way cabin beside the trail. Ho, 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 ho. Ah, this cabin's just a thing. Let's stop here for the night, Sam. Well, my dogs are good for a few hours more, Keel, and I want to cover as much ground as possible. I think I'll keep going. In four or five hours, you should reach Clem Andrade's cabin. He'll be glad to put you up for the night. Clem Andrade? I never heard of him. I met him at the casino in Queen City. He owns a gold mine, but he wants to sell it and go back to the States. <laughs> He'll take you in for the night on the chance that he might sell you his mine. <laughs> I'm in no position to buy a gold mine. I'm broke. <laughs> you sure you'll not come with me, Keel? No, 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 thanks. I've had enough trouble for one day. Oh, you might tell Andre I'll pass his place in the morning. I'll stop and say hello. Right. I'll probably be gone by the time you get there. I'm hitting the trail early. Well, good luck to you, Sam. And the same to you. All right, up, boys. Ha! 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 Four hours later, Sam reached Clem Andre's cabin. The old sourdough welcomed him and offered food and shelter for the night. 
During the evening, Clem questioned his guest, but Sam said nothing about the gold he carried. In the middle of the night, Sam wakened. In the firelight, he saw Clem kneeling beside his pack. The old sourdough held Sam's bag of gold. He dropped it hastily when Sam said, What's the idea? Oh, oh. oh you're awake. And it's a good thing I am. Now, hold on, Sam. I didn't mean any harm. Why were you looking in my pack? I was looking for gold, I admit it. Now that I know you have it, uh, I- I'd like to make you a proposition. I never figured a man with a rich gold mine like you would try to rob me. I wasn't trying to rob you. Just wanted to know if you had enough to afford to buy me out. I'm not interested in buying you out. Sam, my mind's a real producer. I've barely scratched the surface. I'm willing to sell it a sacrifice because I'm anxious to go back to the States. And that's where I'm going, as fast as my feet and a steamship will take me. But, Sam, I I've tell you, made my fortune. I'm offering you another one. Oh, no, thanks. My wife's waiting for me in Seattle. And as soon as I get home, I'm going to make up to her for all the years of trouble that she's had since she married me. And $20,000 will go a long way in helping her to forget. I see. Well, if I can't persuade you to buy me out, I What? I reckon I'll have to kill you. Kill me? Clem, are you loco? What's the idea of pulling a sneak gun? I've already answered that. Well, you, you'd you kill me because I've turned down your mind? I'll kill you because I want your gold. And to think I mistrusted that gambler named Keo. I reckon you've gotten cabin fever. Sam Clem. was stalling for time as he Let moved closer to Clem Andre. Suddenly he lunged forward. He grabbed Clem's wrist. <laughs> For a moment, the two men struggled for possession of the revolver. But Clem clung desperately to the thirty-two. He still held the gun when... Clem Andrade fell to the floor. Clem. Clem! Sam knelt beside the old sourdough. He felt vainly for a pulse. Then he realized the truth. Clem Andrade was dead. I... I've killed him. The realization was followed by a sickening awareness of his own position... The sharp and bitter memory of his trial and conviction as a killer stabbed at his mind. He knew the police would investigate Andrade's death. And he knew they'd investigate his record when he reported it. He'll never believe the gun went off when I was trying to take it away from him. The hopelessness of his situation panicked Sam. I gotta get out of here, and fast. Early the next morning, the man named Keo stopped at Clem Andrade's cabin. When there was no reply to his knock on the door, he lifted the latch. And then he saw Clem Andrade's body. Andrade. Andrade, what? Oh, he's dead. And I think I know who shot him. Keo left the cabin and hurried to the nearby town of Queen City. Sergeant Preston was there on patrol when the gambler came to report the murder. Sergeant, I found Andrade this morning when I went to his cabin. Sam Savage must have shot him and then cleared out. What makes you sure a savage killed him? I met him on the trail. We traveled together as far as the way cabin saw the Clem's place. Sam told me he was broke. I see. I stayed at the way cabin for the night, but he shoved on. Now, Sergeant, Sam Savage was broke. Clem owned a rich mine. So you think Sam killed Clem and robbed him? Of course. I recognized Savage as soon as I saw him. He served time for killing a man in Seattle. I know all about his prison record, Kill. Come on, we'll visit that way cabin. The way cabin? But I thought you'd want to go to Clem Andre's place. I do. But first, I'm going to make sure the tracks at the way cabin bear out your story. Now, let's go. Come along, King. At the way cabin, Preston saw the tracks where the two men had separated. Then he went into the cabin. He found signs of recent occupancy. Satisfied that Keo had spent the night there, he went outside. I made these tracks when I left this morning, Sergeant. They lead to Clem's place. We'll go there. Come on, King. When they reached Clem Andrade's cabin, the sergeant examined the dead man. He took the revolver from Clem's hand. Andrade's gun has been fired. Uh, apparently, he didn't fire soon enough. Uh, sergeant, I... I hope you're convinced that I had nothing to do with Clem's murder. Your tracks and the condition of the way cabin convinced me of that, kill. Judging from the tracks outside, Sam Savage is headed for Dawson. King and I'll start after him at once. Come on, boy. It was late afternoon when the tracks of the fugitive led Sergeant Preston to Kerry Carson's trading post. The sergeant halted his team in front of the isolated building, went inside. Kerry greeted him warmly. Well, Sergeant Preston, it's a real pleasure to see you. How are you, Kerry? I'm fine. 
Where's King? Outside with the sled. Why didn't you bring him in? I'll not be here long, Gary. Oh. I'm trying to overtake a man who made those tracks in front of your store. Did he buy supplies? Indeed he did, Sergeant. He's the only customer who's been here today. What's he look like? Well, he's a tall fellow, maybe a little heavier than you are. He has a bushy black beard. How long ago was he here? Oh, seven, eight hours ago. Well, what's he done, Sergeant? He's wanted in connection with the murder of a mine owner. Uh, Sakes alive. I never suspected he was mixed up in murder. I figured he was a prospector who struck it rich. He's not rich. Sam Savage is broke. He wasn't broke, Sergeant. He had plenty of gold with him. His poke must have had 20 pounds of gold dust in it. Before he reached Andre's cabin, he was broke. The gold he's carrying, they convict him of murder. Mm, Sakes alive. Thanks for the information, Carrie. Goodbye, Sergeant. I hope you catch that man. Thanks. Bye, Carrie. We're set to travel, King. Up front, boy. All right, on tang! On, you husky! Since leaving Clem's cabin, King had become familiar with the scent of the man whose track Sergeant Preston followed. The mighty husky knew that this was a manhunt, and he set a fast pace to overtake the sled ahead. Meanwhile, Sam Savage drove his own dogs hard. From time to time, he glanced at his back trail. His tracks were sharp and clear. He knew that as soon as Clem's body was found, his tracks would be followed. Oh, oh, oh. Sam halted his sled. Then he checked his rifle and revolver carefully to make sure they were loaded and ready for instant action. Now I'm all set for anyone who tries to stop me before I reach Dawson. All right, on your feet, Husky. We've no time to rest. Bus, get along there. Ah, ah, hey. Sam traveled all night stopping only to rest his dogs briefly in the last few hours of darkness before dawn. Late the following morning, he started up a long, spruce-covered slope that led to Beaver Bridge. The bridge spanning a deep ravine was a shortcut that would save considerable time. He paused when he reached the top to look back over the ground he had covered. In the valley below, he saw a sled and a dog team heading toward the base of the slope. It's a mountain. By the way his team is traveling, he'll catch up to me within an hour. Must As soon as he had crossed Beaver Bridge, Sam halted his dogs. He took an axe from the gear he had packed on his sled. With furious strokes, he hewed away at the log bridge. Soon it began to totter. With a few more blows, crashed to the floor of the ring below. Mush! Mush! Come on now! Mush! Then Sam drove his own team behind a massive rock formation a short distance from the edge of the ravine. Oh, oh, oh! Satisfied that he and his team would be concealed and sheltered by the rocks, he waited until he heard a voice shout. Sam stepped into view with his rifle raised. Preston saw him and called. Oh, your rifle, Savage. I want you. So you were trailing me. I'm keeping you covered. I followed you from Andre's cabin. Destroying Beaver Bridge can't save you. Maybe not. But a rifle bullet will stop you. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Let's talk about schools for a while. You know, the elementary schools are getting pretty crowded these days. And during the coming years, there will be millions of other children growing into school age. The crowded situation is likely to get worse before it gets better if something is not done right now to provide for them. So why don't you talk to mother and dad about the problem? Tell them they can do a lot to help by working with local civic groups and school boards. Invite them to see your school so they can see for themselves what needs to be done. If they're not sure how to go about improving the schools in your community, Tell them to write to the National Citizens Commission for the Public Schools at 2 West 45th Street, New York 19, New York. The commission will show them how other people in other communities are taking action on this problem. We're sure that your mother and dad want you to have the same chances at proper education as other youngsters. So you find out what is being done and get mother and dad interested in the project. Interested enough to pitch in and help.
Now to continue. Sam Savage had crossed Beaver Bridge. Then he had weakened the log structure and finally sent it crashing to the floor of the deep ravine below. Sam stood on one side of the ravine with his rifle poised and ready. Sergeant Preston and his dogs were on the opposite ledge. The fugitive called. Go back while you have a chance, Mountie. I'm not turning back, Savage. I'm coming after you. With the bridge down, you can't cross this ravine. I'm going around it. I'll pick up your trail on the other side. Good. That'll give me a six-hour lead. I'll be able to outrun you. You know better than that. I've overtaken you once, and I'll do it again. Look, I don't want to kill you, but I'll not be captured. I'm going on, and I'll be watching for you. Try to close in, and I'll shoot. With that warning, Sam disappeared behind the rocks. <laughs> Secure in the knowledge that boulders six feet high separated him from his pursuer, Sam raced his dogs away from the edge of the ravine. For a moment, the sergeant studied the wall of rock that concealed the man he hunted. Then, as he turned his team to begin the long trip around the ravine, he wondered about the man he was following, a man he had suspected of murder. If Sam Savage is a killer. Why didn't he kill me when he had the chance? <laughs> All right, King, let's go, fella. All right, on King! On you! <laughs> Now Sam knew he was being followed. In the brief meeting at the edge of the ravine, he had accurately judged the Mountie to be a relentless manhunter who would be stopped by nothing short of a bullet. Sam didn't want to shoot the policeman. He hoped instead to reach an outbound steamer in time to escape the law. In order to keep the slim lead he had gained by destroying the bridge, he called on his loyal dogs to exert every ounce of speed and endurance they possessed. He drove them hard and used every trick possible to delay or confuse his pursuer. Darkness fell, but Sam kept going. He planned to stop for food and rest on the opposite side of Royal River. Shortly after the moon had risen, he saw the ice-covered river ahead. Oh, oh, oh. The shortest possible route to Dawson was across the river at the point where Sam had halted. He studied the moonlit ice for several minutes, wondering if the thaw had weakened it. From the river's edge, the surface seemed firm. Might be thin in the middle. He hesitated, trying to decide whether to cross on the ice or to continue along the trail until he reached a bridge that spanned the river 15 miles upstream. He was anxious to reach Dawson as soon as possible. He also wanted to save his dogs unnecessary travel. He made up his mind to risk crossing. All right, mush! Mush, you hussy! The dogs balked. Their instincts warned them the ice was dangerous. Come on, mush! Sam cracked his whip over the heads of the huskies. Reluctantly, they pulled the sled to the ice. The dogs were tense and wary, but Sam, in his anxiety, paid no attention. Then suddenly, without warning, the lead dog stopped in her tracks. Her uneasy teammates also halted and howled their refusal to go forward. You can't stop here. Come on, Kuna. Keep moving. Come on. Come on. Now. Sam went ahead, intending to grab the collar of the lead dog and force her to go ahead. But she was already turned back toward shore. As if they had heard a sharp command, the other dogs followed her example. Kuna, come back here! But Sam Kuna. was scarcely aware of what the dogs were doing, for the ice beneath his feet was giving away. No! He plunged into the icy water. No. 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 Sergeant Preston had all but closed the gap that separated him from Sam Savage. He had been close enough to see the fugitive start across the ice and had urged his team to an even faster pace in an effort to stop Sam. Preston knew that with a thaw approaching, the ice was not safe. As he reached the river's edge, he saw Sam's dog stop. Okay, how are you, Husky? Hold on. Instantly, he realized what was happening. He grabbed a rope. Then he and King raced forward. Sam's runaway team came toward them. The Huskies were in a frenzied rush to reach the safety of solid ground. Stop that team, King. Don't let them get away. Then Preston saw Sam struggling to keep afloat. Help! Hold on, I'm coming. I'll throw you a rope. Hang on to it. I'll pull you out. Grab that rope. All right, hang on. Sam was a big man, and he was heavy. Preston threw every ounce of strength into a tremendous effort to save him. When at last he was out of the water, Sam gasped. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot. Keep moving. Right. King was waiting on the shore. He had halted Sam's team near his master's. As the two men reached them, the Mountie grabbed a bearskin rug to give his soaked and shivering prisoner. But first he said, You're under arrest, Sam. I'll take your gun. All right, you win. Here it is. Thanks. 
I'll wrap yourself in this robe before you freeze. I'm glad you were close enough to haul me out of that water. You were foolish to try crossing that ice this time of year. I was in a hurry. I didn't think there were any dogs in the Yukon faster than mine. You have a good team. Yours overtook me. If it weren't for that, I, I wouldn't be under arrest. Well, what's next, Mounty? We're going back to Andre's cabin to pick up his body. And then... Then Dawson. And another trial for murder. Sergeant Preston and his prisoner arrived in Dawson a week later. Sam was placed in jail, and an inquest was held. As soon as it was over, Sergeant Preston went to Inspector Conrad's office. Come in, Sergeant. Inspector, what was the result of the Andre inquest? Sam Savage will be tried for murder. With his record and the evidence against him, he'll probably hang. Inspector, I've been studying the record of his trial in the United States. He's a convicted killer. I watched him closely during the trip to Dawson, sir. I may owe my life to the fact that he's not a killer. Huh? After he crossed Beaver Bridge, Savage had an opportunity to shoot me. The distance across the ravine was too great for King to have jumped. You reported that Savage destroyed the bridge to discourage pursuit. That's right, sir, but he knew I could go around the ravine and continue on his trail. He could have killed me and escaped capture. Nevertheless, Sergeant, the evidence against yes, him... Yes, sir, but the record of the Seattle trial indicates that the evidence against him wasn't thoroughly investigated. He may have been telling the truth when he said he fired in self-defense. He claims self-defense in Seattle. Here he claims Andre's death was an accident. You brought him in, Sergeant. You know the facts point to robbery as the motive for murder. I know, Inspector. How soon will he be tried? In about three weeks. Well, that'll give me time to make an investigation, sir. An investigation may prove Sam Savage is behind the robberies that were reported six months ago in Queen City. Perhaps you're right, Inspector. Let me know what you learn, Sergeant. Of course, sir. Sergeant Preston took some of Sam's gold with him when he returned to Queen City. The Monty learned that Sam had staked a claim on Queen River. He had Sam's gold analyzed. He tried to find out whether or not Sam had had a part in any of the robberies that had been committed in the area. The result of his search for clues was startling. When his work was completed, the sergeant returned to Dawson in time for the opening of the trial. The defendant was called to the witness stand. Attorney Clinton asked, where did you get the $20,000 you had in your possession when you were captured? I worked for that gold. It was mine. Keogh testified that 24 hours before Terry Carson saw you with it, you were broke. Yeah. I wasn't broke. Didn't you tell Keogh you were broke? That you couldn't afford to buy Clem Andrade's mine? I told him I was broke because I was afraid he might try to rob me if he knew the truth. <laughs> Sam could see disbelief on the faces of the jurors. The memory of the 11-year-old trial in Seattle mocked him. His second trial seemed to be a repetition of the first. There was more testimony. As the evidence against him mounted, Sam felt like a trapped animal. I wasn't trying to rob Clem Andrade. He pulled a sneak gun to rob me. Clem Andrade owned a gold mine. Why would he try to rob a man who was broke? I wasn't broke. I tell you, that $20,000 in gold is mine. Sam could almost feel the noose tightening around his neck. He couldn't prove that the gold was his. He silently cursed the suspicion that had prompted him to tell Keo he was broke. He wished he had taken someone into his confidence. There was no one to back his story. And then Sergeant Preston came forward. The Mountie was sworn in. Attorney Clinton said, Sergeant Preston, uh, I understand you've been investigating this case thoroughly during the past few weeks. Now, what did you find? I learned a number of things, Mr. Clinton. I understand the motive claimed for murder, the $20,000 in gold the defendant had on his sled when I captured him. And uh, what about it, Sergeant? I can prove that gold actually belonged to Sam Savage. <laughs> proof that Sam had staked a claim on Queen River was introduced. The sergeant explained how exhaustive tests by experts proved that the gold had come from the banks of Queen River. Then the sergeant said, I was in Queen City at the time Andre was killed. I'd gone there to investigate a series of robberies. When I returned, after bringing in the defendant, I resumed my investigations of the robberies. And why? Because Sam Savage might have been involved in them. The evidence I gathered led me to Andre's cabin. I searched the place again and found most of the stolen loot cleverly concealed in the wall behind a cupboard. <laughs> I also found this 15-year-old handbill, Mr. Clinton. 
It carries a picture of Clem Andrade. May I see it, Sergeant? Of course. Blackie Andrade. Wanted dead or alive for murder and robbery. <laughs> the revelation of Clem Andrade's past sent a stir of excitement surging through the courtroom. Telegrams to Sergeant Preston from American authorities who had searched for Andrade were introduced as evidence. So were letters stating that rewards were still waiting to be claimed by the man who captured Andrade, dead or alive. Soon after Preston's testimony, the jury retired to reach a verdict. Finally, after considerable deliberation, they returned to the courtroom to announce their decision. We find the defendant not guilty. Not guilty. As the excited crowd left the high ceiling room, Sam Savage hurried to Sergeant Preston's side. He gripped the sergeant's hand and blinked away the tears of gratitude he couldn't control. Sam, your gold is waiting for you at headquarters. And there's a $5,000 reward you might collect in Texas for the capture of Blackie Andre. Sergeant Preston, I, I don't know how to thank you. If it hadn't have been for your testimony, The investigation I... was just part of my job, Sam. I suppose you're anxious to board a steamer and get back to the United States. Oh, yes. I, I want to get home to see my wife. But, but I'll be back, Sergeant. And my wife will be with me. I'll look forward to seeing you both. Bye, Sam. Good luck. I'll never forget what you've done, Sergeant. Goodbye. And thanks. Good work, Sergeant Preston. Oh, thank you, Sam. I'm glad the jury found Sam Savage not guilty. So am I, sir. Uh, now, Sergeant, if you'll come to my office... Of course, Inspector. What's my next assignment now that this case is closed? Sergeant Preston will return in just a moment with a word about our next exciting adventure. Here's a mutual note for you. No doubt about it, Mutual casts a shadow. The shadow whose eerie adventures every Sunday provide chilling entertainment for all mystery fans. And for additional Sunday listening, there's Under Arrest and the exciting new program starring Joseph Cotton as a doctor who aids police, the private files of Matthew Bell. There's two detective mysteries which takes actual police file cases and dramatizes them for you with hard-hitting intensity. And tales of two of the slickest fiction sleuths who ever followed a clue are presented for your further puzzlement on Nick Carter, Master Detective, and the Affairs of Peter Salem. Remember, Mutual casts a shadow, a long, lingering shadow of the best in Sunday mystery entertainment. This Sunday, travel Mutual's shadowy path of fantastic adventure and true crime stories with Under Arrest, The Private Files of Matthew Bell, Two Detective Mysteries, the Shadow, Nick Carter, The Affairs of Peter Salem, all heard over most of these stations. And now, here is Sergeant Preston reporting for duty, Inspector. Sergeant, there's been a shooting at the Golden Lady. Harry Wilson, the owner, has been murdered. Who did it, sir? There were no actual witnesses, but Bill Chalmers was seen outside Harry's office shortly after the shooting with a gun in his hand. He disappeared. Your job was to bring him in for questioning. Yes, sir. But Bill Chalmers was innocent of Harry Wilson's murder. He had been deliberately framed. And by the time Sergeant Preston reached that conclusion, the sergeant was facing the real killer's gun. Don't miss this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of Sergeant Preston of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon is brought to you every Tuesday and Thursday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until Thursday. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.